Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's video is all about the self-diagnostic test on any Tizen OS smartwatch. For this video, I'll be using my latest Galaxy Watch 3 and my Galaxy Watch Active 2. So let's get started. If it's your first time on my channel, please consider subscribing as I do regular videos for various smartwatches like this one, smartphone reviews, tech tutorials and much more. I have an entire playlist full of Samsung smartwatch videos which you will find in the playlist tab as well as linked at the end of this video which contains a lot of cool videos like this one so go ahead and check it out. By the way guys, I'll be doing a free giveaway of this cool premium watch face by Urarity in few days for my subscribers and I don't want you guys to miss out on it. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. I have done such free giveaways in the past which you will find in the description of this video. With that teaser aside, before I start the diagnostic test, I want you guys to do two important things. Make sure to save this video as well as the playlist linked at the end of this video to your YouTube library. So you can come back and watch this video again at a later time in case if you run into any issues with your watch as I bet this video will be jam packed with a lot of information. And do me a favor please subscribe as this is what I do for a lot of smartwatches and smartphones on this channel. Now let's go in the settings of the Galaxy Watch 3. Scroll all the way down. By the way, you see this developer mode. I have done an in-depth video for it linked up here and you can check it out once you're done watching this one. For now, let's go in about, then devices, and you have to click five times on the serial number and you will be instantly taken to the dial pad. Now, this is not a phone dialer, so I'll recommend you to refrain from playing around with this. However, since we are here, let me point out some important codes which may be helpful to developers or if you are someone who just want to explore the watch under the hood. For ease and my comfort I'll call asterisk as star and the number sign as hash also known as pound in North America. So the pretty basic code which works on any smartphone or watch is star hash 06 hash. This will reveal the IMEI or serial number of the device. By the way, if you want to take a screenshot, just press both of these buttons together. Now to go back, just press the top right button. Next code is star hash 1234 hash. This is to check software version of the watch. Next code is star hash 12580 star 369 hash. This is to check software and hardware information. The rotating bezel is deep rooted to all these menu and works great which is what I really like versus the fossil gen 5 where the rotating crown is not deep rooted like this. Next code is star hash 0228 hash and this is for the battery status. Next code is star hash 1111 hash. This will display FTA SW version. Next code is star hash 2222 hash. This will display FTA HW version. There are more secret codes to test individual functions. But with this next code we will enter the diagnostic mode with which we can test a lot of functions and sensors of this as well as other Tizen OS smartwatch. So go ahead and enter star hash zero star hash and you will enter the so called test mode. I recently did a video for the diagnostic test for any Wear OS smartwatch and it is linked up here in case if you have a friend or family who can benefit from it. So the first few tests are for the display pixel RGB testing. So with this test you will know if any single pixel of the display is not working. This is extremely helpful test if you are buying a used or a refurbished device to make sure all the pixels are working. So when I click red the screen should turn red completely. You can go back at any point by double clicking the top right button. The same goes for green and blue. Next is vibration, as the name implies, this will vibrate the watch to its max capacity. This way you can find out if there are any issues with the haptic motor of this watch. 
Next is sensor. And here is where you will find all the sensors like accelerometer, barometer, ambient light sensor, and gyroscope. So under accelerometer, you will see image or graph. I personally like graph as in the image you will see the same value with a cute image in the background making it hard to discern. The graph on the other hand is a cool continuous graphical representation. You can see all the subtle movements are continuously recorded. Next is barometer. Here you have an option of self test which will display all the values like temperature, pressure, and altitude. This test is helpful to get temperature, pressure, and altitude without the watch being connected to internet, phone, or having any third-party app to read all this value. Next is ambient light sensor, which detects the amount of light hitting the light sensor in lux, which is the unit of luminance. So for people who need to measure precise brightness of the environment, they can use this test to determine precise light in the area. Anyways, if I were to put my hand on the display, the level will decrease and increase as more light hits the sensor. This is pretty cool, eh? Last is gyroscope and here you have three options. Self, which will basically self-test the gyroscope sensor with all the details of each axis. Under display, you will get the count of X, Y, and Z axis. My personal favorite though is graph, under which you'll get a graphical representation of all the axis. Next is rotary test. This is a cool test to see if the rotating bezel is working or not. You can go ahead and rotate the bezel clockwise to see if you get all green clicks. Sometimes it's hard to discern if the rotating bezel is working completely or not, but with this test you will precisely know if the bezel is registering all the clicks or not. You'll get yellow clicks on counterclock rotation. Mine is a brand new watch, but if your watch fell on the ground and you want to make sure that the bezel is working, this is the test you want to run. Now this test is not available on the Galaxy Watch Active 2 as it has a digital rotating bezel unlike this mechanical rotating bezel of the Galaxy Watch 3. All the above tests and codes will work on Galaxy Watch Active 2 and other Tizen OS smartwatches exactly as it did for this Galaxy Watch 3. Now let's move on to the next test and that is touch. This is how you find out if any particular area of the display is working or not. You just have to draw along these empty boxes to see if the screen is working. If your watch suffered a fall and has a minor crack on the screen, you can test the display with this test instantaneously. Next is speaker test. This will play a sound from the built-in speaker at the loudest to see if the speaker is working or not. Pretty self-explanatory. Next is sub-key test. This is to test the physical buttons of the watch. Now when I press the top button, the screen will turn pink and when I click the bottom button, it will turn red. Even without this test, you will know right away if the buttons are working or not as you need them to navigate around. Moving on, it's the sensor hub. This is a self-test to check various firmware versions and most likely it will auto-pass unless there is some problem. Moving on, it's the heart rate monitor test where you get three options, the HRM, Clicking on it will activate the sensor to emit the green light and when you place it on your wrist, it will detect the heart rate. Next is HR and SNR that is signal to noise ratio which will display the reading side by side. It's about the same as the previous test. And lastly, EOL which is an automatic sensor test with all the details.
Moving on, it's MLC test, which based on my research is a type of technology that is used in fingerprint sensor. And if I click on reference read, open IF cover, it starts getting a reference. But as soon as I click release, close IF cover, it fails. Maybe because it's for smartphones with fingerprint reader. Anyways, next on the list is wireless battery test. This will test the wireless charging capabilities of the watch. As soon as you place it on a wireless charger, it will display some numbers. If you find that your watch is not properly charging from a wireless charger or despite of the charger having fast charge capacity, your watch does not charge fast, then this is where you have to pay a visit. Next is mic test. This will start a graphical representation of the incoming sound to the microphone to test if it's working or not versus calling your friend and asking if he or she can hear you or not. Next is SPK loopback test. This is a test where the microphone input will be output via the speaker. So whatever you say, you will hear back instantly from the speaker. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. So this can test both microphone and speaker at the same time. And this is somehow not available on the Galaxy Watch Active 2. I'm not sure why. So apart from this and the rotary test, all the other tests are just identical on the Galaxy Watch Active 2. Lastly, it's white. That is basically a white screen, which I think is what a flashlight application does. So you can actually use this test as a flashlight. So if you have any other Samsung smartwatch other than Galaxy Watch 3 and Active 2, check these tests out and see what you're missing out and comment down below if you find something interesting on your watch. Also comment down below if you have any addition to this or if I missed out anything. With that being said, that's it for today's video. Make sure to subscribe as I don't want you to miss out on that upcoming watch face giveaway. And either way, subscribing to this channel, you will make sure that you don't miss out on any upcoming smartwatch. So I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please give this video a thumbs up. It really means a lot. Also follow me on my other social media networks for early preview to upcoming videos and free giveaways. Links are in the description of all my videos. Thanks so much for watching and take care. I'll catch you guys in the next one.